Is the Western world just too arrogant to understand Bitcoin? When you understand that Bitcoin is made as a, a solution to, to our monetary system, you don't need the cheat coins. You don't. Is the fiat system the matrix? Everybody is controlled with the bank. Some people don't like change, but you need to embrace change if the alternative is a, a disaster. The, the world will be a better place with Bitcoin. You made a podcast before that I, I listened to, and it, uh, it was like the title something with the fiat and the matrix uh, and how to escape the matrix. So. Just to uh, open question, uh, is the fiat system the matrix? Like the when we ca make the comparison with the uh, matrix, the movie is is fiat the, the matrix? I would say it is. I would say it is. Like every every everybody's stuck in the matrix and the fiat system, and mm. like as soon as you start looking at, in like Bitcoin, like you you start to find your way out. Mm. It's so so cool. Like when you when you start to realize that, and you can draw that that connection between like matrix and and our fiat world how deep are you still in the matrix if i'm still in the matrix how, how deep are you? like i feel, feel like everybody is still a little bit in there like everybody has some 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 toes some some shoes in the matrix uh even i use daily the euro uh i get even paid from sponsors in in euros sometimes and sometimes in, in bitcoin like they're like Even in the Bitcoin world, even someone that does only Bitcoin podcast, even now I have to have a bank account, I have to have the fiat system. So it's just a question like, how deep are you still in the matrix? Uh, then I, I guess I'm, I'm pretty stuck in the, in, in the matrix then because I live in Sweden and Bitcoin in Sweden, no, it does not go hand in hand. So yeah, I, I'm pretty deep stuck in, in the matrix, unfortunately. Sweden is also really strict with cash. Like they, they are really cashless, yeah. right? I heard. We are, we are. Like everybody is controlled by, with like the banks and like our bank accounts, and it's crazy actually. And we we, we do have the the oldest central bank in the world, Riksbanken. Uh, so I feel like we're gonna be the last ones jumping on the Bitcoin train. I'm pretty sure. The last ones, but. I feel like Sweden is uh, such an innovative country also. Like it, it seems like there's a lot of uh, innovation coming. Then, and then there's also the they handled COVID, I feel like, uh, really differently than uh, everyone else. Uh, but then in Bitcoin, they cannot see it. Like uh, I, I didn't want to go the Sweden route actually with the podcast, but <laughs> let's get a little bit in that. Like how do you see the, the Sweden in, in general? Is, is it good with the innovation? Uh, why are they not getting on, on, on Bitcoin? What do you see there? I would say that Sweden is pretty good with innovation. We're we're good with like um, the, the the technical things, but when it comes to money, uh, like I feel like we're like laying beyond all the time. But we also like look a lot at like how the U.S. is handling things, and like now with the uh, F, uh, EFTs um, and everything, I feel like maybe something will start to happen in Sweden as well. Uh, but I don't know. Like it works pretty slowly, and it's. So, like, when I talk about, like, the media, for example, in Sweden, mm, I said, don't even go there, because the way that media, like, puts Bitcoin, they want us to think that Bitcoin is for, for criminals, and it's so bad for the environment. And, like, if that's the picture that Sweden is, is showing the society, like, that's what people will start to think. So when I talk to, to like, my friends about Bitcoin, And especially when I started to do that, they looked at me and was like, are you criminal or what's going on? Like, what are you buying with these Bitcoins? And uh, so it's great. But uh, yeah, I do feel like we're, we're good at, in the innovation part. Not with money, though. Like you you can't pay with Bitcoin anywhere in, in, in Sweden. You can't. Uh, so that... And I think also that has a lot to do with like our tax rules. We have very regulated tax rules. And I actually got the chance to sit down with the, like Sweden's tax agency and I asked them about this. And like they they never like gave me a good answer. Uh, I, I especially talked about like um like if a small like restaurant or hairdresser or like a saloon wants to accept Bitcoin as a payment, like they're scared to start because of the tax re regulations. And we're gonna be like so beyond the other countries if we keep go keep going like this. Uh, and they were like, yeah, send us an email and we can look into this, but I'm not gonna get an answer, so. 
whenever you hear uh, my old job was in sales and whenever you see, hear like send us an email it's over <laughs> it's like basically yeah. then the no uh but is it really interesting is, is there like um i never looked into it but in germany in austria there are like few places where you can buy things with bitcoin even like in restaurants even like sometimes in big restaurants uh you can buy with bitcoin there's like the ptc map where you can see like uh, where, where are some uh things but it's it's rarely possible, but there are restaurants. Like you could eat and drink and kind of survive in Austria with with only Bitcoin. The only problem is Bitcoin is a taxable event. So when you spend your Bitcoin, you have to pay 27.5% in taxes when I'm not uh, mistaken. So that's the biggest hurdle. But in Sweden, it's not even possible. Or is, are there some vendors? Uh, well, try to, to try to look up Sweden at the BTC map. Um, we look like North Korea. We honestly do. Like it is some places that they they say that it, that they accept Bitcoin. I haven't looked it up. I think it like it's like two cafes or something in Stockholm. I know that it was one cafe, and I actually walked there, and it just said closed. So it was just closed. Uh, like, so I don't know. Like, it's it's legal for for people to use it and like for for restaurants and store to use it as well but people don't like it and i think it's mostly because like the the gap in in knowledge and you touched on also on the mainstream media side and i feel like uh with with you with, with tiktok what you're doing on twitter and and all the the rest you're kind of representing a new form of media like that's yeah. different than the mainstream media where we have in mainstream media, we have like these news outlets and these institutions that basically just hire a bunch of writers and write the things they want to see in the newspaper. And now with, uh, social media, with Nostra, it's even better. But with mainstream media, mainstream social media, uh, we have individual creators who just talk their mind, sometimes get deleted, <laughs> sometimes get banned. Yeah. Uh, but uh, usually like the the doctor mind and they can actually uh, provide independent information uh how do you see that shift like is is whole news media completely gone soon and then we have this individual uh, creators where people more follow individual people independent uh, content creators and and less just news outlet uh, or is the Twitter and the YouTube and the TikTok, the new news outlet that kind of control what the narrative is on the on the platform, uh, and do we have to go to Nostra and to the decentralized uh, media? Like, how do you see the media uh, landscape and the chance for being a little bit more free? Um, that's that's such a good question. Like, I would say that I, I watch the news every day in Sweden. Like, you can see like how censored it is. Uh, because especially I, I'm a lot on Twitter uh, so I get a lot of news on Twitter and I get a lot of news from from the television in Sweden and the difference is huge so like I prefer to getting my uh, to get my news from like uh, independent accounts because I, I trust that more than I trust our media today um, and I, I think that's also the the reason that I started with like so I upload videos on, on TikTok uh, and I started doing that in 20, 2021. And that was especially because I saw, like I was talking to like my friends uh, when I when I found my way to Bitcoin and then I started talking to them about Bitcoin. And like I when I saw like how, how huge this knowledge gap is, I was like, okay, who's going to educate these people? Because the media will not. And my friends, they like, they don't even use Twitter. They use Instagram. And maybe TikTok, but they don't go on Twitter and and like get a knowledge of Bitcoin. So I was like, okay, somebody somebody needs to fill this gap, and that somebody well that had to be me. So like I prefer, I really prefer um, like independent uh, media. I think, but you should be like aware of what you listen to, of course. Always uh, be critic to everything. How, how is it to create content on Twitter, uh, TikTok especially because? I also do my podcast, my shorts. I distribute them just everywhere. So also on TikTok, and all um, like every like two or three weeks, I reinstall my TikTok app and see what comments I, I got. And usually it's pretty, pretty, 
uh, bad from the comments that I get, like really a uh, big knowledge gap. In YouTube and Twitter, it's kind of mixed. There are also like uh, people that are really educated and have really nice impacts, uh, like insights in the Bitcoin community. But there are also, there's well, like there's a huge disconnect between uh, what they know about Bitcoin and what they think they know about Bitcoin. Uh, how do you like? Is it just because I have a new account there and 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 not a lot of Bitcoiners found there, or is it general TikTok? Mm, I would say, like, indeed. First of all, uh, it's it feels like I'm in two different communities because I now now I upload everything that I everything that I upload on on TikTok. I also upload on Twitter, and the feedback that I got that I get from Twitter, it's so much better than the feedback I get on on TikTok. And I feel like uh, on TikTok, we reach the people that don't know anything about Bitcoin. Uh, and like, I get a lot of more questions, questions there. And also like um, a lot, a lot more conversations, like not now, because I don't know something happened to my algorithm. So the videos aren't, aren't working that good. Uh, but like people start uh, debating in my, in my comments about Bitcoin and I'm not even in there. Like. Talk, talk about like how Bitcoin is bad for the environment and everything, and then somebody else comes in and they start arguing in my in my comments. Uh, but TikTok, it's more like for for I would say like especially for me for like the people that don't know anything about Bitcoin. And when I upload something on Twitter, it's everybody is so supportive for for everything. Uh, but when when I started to upload videos on on TikTok, I like I got pretty good feedback and I got a lot of views. So I don't know how it is for you. Yeah, it, it's uh, I had a previous, like there's a few things going on because I had a previous TikTok account uh, where I got like three and a half, three and a half thousand uh, followers and then they were German and they were stock investors. And mm -hmm. then I left that account for like two, three years and now I just push Bitcoin English content on there. And I think the algorithms just does not know what to do with it. Uh, and uh, I like get the some uh, followers and I lose some followers <laughs> uh, every day. So like I'm like kind of stuck in the same thing. But I really also don't care too much uh, about TikTok. Should should I be more on TikTok? Is is should should we uh, <laughs> should we put know. more importance on on TikTok? Do you see is is it, is it important to be on TikTok as Bitcoiner? Um, like I would say that we reach out to to like other people are on TikTok. We, we we reach out to the younger generation, like my generation, and like we need the knowledge that we share on Twitter today. But I don't know how it is in like Australia, for example, but my friends are not on Twitter. So if I want to share my knowledge with them and like with, with my generation, then I need to be on, on TikTok because they don't use Twitter. Um. So, but, but it's hard. Like for, for example, I uploaded so many videos and just last week i got on my account and i watched through it and it was so many videos that has been deleted because i i, I think i think that tiktok is if i understood it correctly they they had some like kind of the collaboration with universal music or something like that so they deleted so much music and when they deleted the music my videos disappeared uh and i don't know it's this rumor also that uh, TikTok is about to get banned or something in, in the US. I'm not that invested in, in that. I like Twitter more now, so yeah. Uh, that... take, take take TikTok off my shoulder. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a fascinating platform. As as I said, like I'm I'm rarely on there. I'm just checking uh if if some video went viral. Never never happened, but I'm always checking like all, all, every second week. But it's interesting. But now let's get to, into my actual questions that I have for you. This was kind of a sidetrack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wanted to start actually with why are you PTC chick and not crypto chick or something like that? Uh, okay, so I got, that's a good question because I got into um, to Bitcoin from the economic way. So I started to, to study international political economy in 2021. Like uh, when, when, I, when I started to, to, to study that, I guess that you already know that like the, the education in like universities, they're very focused on Keynesianism. So 
like that's what typically uh, taught in in the university. So I think that this e- economic journey actually led me to a broader understanding of uh, and eventually like the world of Bitcoin and its uh, implications. So uh, I'm a I'm a person that's always like I always ask myself why. So I I feel like it was the inflation part that dragged me in to Bitcoin. So Let's say, for example, the Riksbanken, it's Sweden's central bank. And as I've already told you, the the oldest bank, uh, the central bank in the world. So they consider a 2% inflation rate as normal, right? That's what's keep uh, the economy moving. And like I accepted this. I I was uh, taught this in in the university and I accepted it. Uh, But like I couldn't let that go. So I was like, okay, it makes sense, but somehow I couldn't shake it off. I was like, okay, 2% inflation, why 2%? But also the statement that 2% inflation is normal. Like, honestly, how can inflation be normal? Is there such a thing as normal inflation? So I I honestly began researching like the 2% inflation thing. And like at first time, this seemed to make sense because I didn't know any better. But then uh, I talked about this in in the other podcast as well. I I stumbled up uh, on on inflation. Because I was googling this, uh, and I stumbled on uh, up on uh, inflation in Venezuela, and I came across this photo. I guess you've seen it. It's um, of chicken and money. Have you seen that? Uh, no, chicken and money. Oh, you have to Google it. Just if if you just Google inflation in Venezuela, you will get a picture of uh, a chicken and cash, and the cash weighs more than the chicken. And I was like, I I read this article about Venezuela experiencing eighty thousand percent inflation. So that's a huge difference with, from from like Sweden, and we're like, okay, two two percent inflation is normal, and then eighty percent. And I, I was like, like, where did this go wrong? Eighty percent inflation can't be normal, and like asking myself why again, I I came to the realization that I don't think that I never truly understood inflation until then, uh, like whether it's two percent inflation or eighty thousand percent inflation, when our central bank decides to create money out of thin air, the value of the money in our bank accounts decrease in value. So the image of uh, of the chicken and, and money from Venezuela, it wasn't about the chicken. It was only like illustrating that the money had become completely worthless. So, well, I, I started questioning this and, and also realizing like when you start questioning, I like start to ask the question, why? It becomes clear that like the issue isn't the people, it's the money. And theoretically, what happened in Venezuela can happen anywhere in the world. So I, I guess I was like, okay, Keynes, can you explain this to me? And he like he couldn't explain that to me. So I I had to like start searching for, for other answers myself. And uh, and I think like I especially remember, like, my dad, he's uh, very into tech, so he had some knowledge about Bitcoin. And I was sitting at home uh, after one day of school, and I was just bragging about inflation. And he was like, oh, maybe you should look into Bitcoin. I was like, hmm, what are you saying now? Like, Bitcoin doesn't solve any of this. Like, how how could this made-up currency solve the question about inflation? Uh, But then I started to, like look Bitcoin up and, and, and like getting my like education on, on Bitcoin. And I realized that, wow, like this is like, this solves this. It actually does. Um, so I actually, I jumped over the shit coins. I never fell in that hole. It was just from when you come from the like the economic sphere, it was just a jump to Bitcoin, like straight. So I guess that's it. And also like Bitcoin is the only the, the only uh, cryptocurrency that's made as an as a solution to like our monetary system that is falling apart. And like uh, I had this, um, um, no, I don't know how to put it in English, but like for me, I, I think it's pretty clear that you don't understand um, the solution of, of anything if you don't understand the problem. So for example, um, B- Bitcoin is made as a solution and the problem is a monetary system. So, for example, you won't understand the solution of uh, of a vacuum cleaner if you don't understand that you don't want a dirty floor. So, like, if someone put a va- vacuum cleaner in front of you, you would just be looking at it. You would be like, okay, what do I do with this? I don't know. 
And the same goes with Bitcoin. Like if somebody puts Bitcoin in front of you, you will be like, what do I do with this? I, I don't know. And so when, when you understand that Bitcoin is made as a, a solution to, to our monetary system, you don't need the cheat coins. You don't. So that that's BTC chick and not crypto chick. I love it. And the one thing that just popped up in my mind when you said uh, you have to understand the problem and to understand the solution, I feel like in the Western world, Sweden, Austria, all the America even, um, inflation is there. Inflation is a problem. But I feel like it's not a big enough problem for people to really grasp that it is a problem. Like people still think, yeah, there's war, there was COVID, we have a little bit of inflation now, it will be good in one, two years. Like I feel like that's the, the, the mainstream narrative around inflation. Yeah, it will be better and we're coming down with inflation. Uh, prices are not rising dramatically as we hear from Venezuela and stuff like that. Uh, is the Western world just too arrogant uh, to, to understand Bitcoin? I think so. And, and especially like, uh, the younger generation, like I, I represent a generation that's way too comfortable because everything works out like way too good for us. Where like, I usually say that a blip with, with my Visa and MasterCard, that seems to solve like most of my problems. And like my, my generation, we know that there's an inflation going on, but we don't truly understand what inflation really means. And we understand that like the world is somehow corrupt, but we don't see how corrupt it is. And so, so yeah, for sure, for sure. Is that then when we look in the broader scale and a massive chance for all the developing countries? Uh, I think you even wrote uh, a paper with, with the university about the Bitcoin role in developing countries, if I'm, I'm not, not, not mistaken. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, I, I did not have the chance till now to, to read it uh, carefully. I just like overlooked it a little bit uh, with the two things you wrote, like I think about BRICS and about uh, the role, Bitcoin role in developing countries. I think the story was also cool uh, because you had to convince your professor to actually write about Bitcoin and you had to write about BRICS first. How, how, was, how was that going? Like I found like that story in my studies, it's so interesting because uh, uh, imagine like, yeah, wait, I just had to, sorry. Uh, Im imagine like yeah, so uh, imagine that um, like I study international political economy. This should be people that are like so aware and up to date with eco e economy. And so my 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 studies right now they're actually on hold at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm my goal is to complete them, but I'm taking a double bachelor in criminology and international political economy. But both of them are mainly focused on Bitcoin. So I wanted to write my first uh, thesis. It's called B thesis. It's the one you write before your bachelor. And I wanted to write that about Bitcoin. But my professor, he said that it was too abstract. And uh, he was like, okay, but this is a, a quite short paper. Bitcoin is very abstract. So no, it, you, you shouldn't write about that. And like for me, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it is too abstract to write in a, in a B paper. But instead, he was like, okay, you can write about bricks. So I jumped into bricks. And like, if anyone, if anything is more complicated than Bitcoin, and I don't think that Bitcoin is that complicated, like when you start to dig into it. But if something is way more complicated than Bitcoin, it's bricks. So, but 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 anyway, my my final note in, in that thesis was like, the bricks goal is to reduce the whole the dollar hegemony and like my final note was that maybe we can achieve that in other ways like a little hint and then for my bachelor thesis i i finally got to write about bitcoin but that was after a lot of con consideration so uh like i asked my my advisor if i could write about bitcoin and he was like mm, no like I, I don't know it's not that much of, of research about that it, it would be very hard for you and I was like, what, what do you mean? Not, not, not enough research. We have, we have a lot of research. Um, and, and honestly, like, how will we ever have enough research if no one ever starts re research, researching? So, uh, but, but he said no first. Uh, and then 
I like, I wrote down, I think it was three pages uh, about like, from well-founded resources about Bitcoin's role in developing countries. And I just went to school and I gave that to him. And I was like, okay, read this and like, see if, if that make, make you change your mind. And it did. Um, but that was after a lot of consideration. So he was like, okay, it, it's going to be hard for you, but you can write about that. Uh, and it's actually kind of fun because those three pages that I gave to him, that actually became like my introduction to my thesis. Um, so yeah, it's it's possible to to uh, to read on my website if anybody wants to read that. Uh, but for my next uh, bachelor now, it's in criminology. Uh, I'm really hoping that I get to write about Bitcoin again, and I think that that will be easier than uh, for the economic part uh, because I think that my advisor will think that I'm gonna like convince people that Bitcoin is good for criminals. And my plan is, of course, to, to prove him wrong. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing how to buy bitcoin it's simple have a bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a bitcoin only exchange i use 21 bitcoin 21 bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store bitcoin bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so That's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Uh, I mean, uh, Bitcoin is actually really bad for criminals. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you just have to look at the facts. I mean, even I, I worked in uh, IT security before and the whole advisors uh, said after a long time, if you have the chance, like because when uh, hackers get in your company and they uh, lock everything up and they want then uh, ransomware from you, uh, they steer the world crypto and all the advisors in the IT security say to the companies that got hacked use Bitcoin then we might have a chance to catch them don't use any other cryptocurrencies uh, and that's like yes Bitcoin is a public transparent ledger every like when when you know one point and it's connected you have one point and you can follow it uh, along and it's public knowledge <laughs> like nobody you, you don't even have to ask the The judge to open something. You just like you can look into Bitcoin, and that's why I think uh, criminals uh, will not use Bitcoin. And when all criminals use Bitcoin, that's the other argument that I always bring up. When every one of the criminals use Bitcoin, isn't that the perfect case for Bitcoin being really good money? Also, like there, there's like a lot of sure, different sure. arguments uh, around that. But we mentioned bricks and. Uh, People might be not uh, familiar with BRICS. What, what, what is uh, BRICS? Just uh, do, do give a short uh, thing about it. Uh, so BRICS is a collaboration uh, between countries. And like their goal is that they want to um, uh, decrease uh, the, the impact of the dollar. Um, so it's, uh, oh, let's see, Brazil, um, Russia, India, China, and um, South Africa, I think. Um I think that there are some some more countries in there now. Like I I found of course BRICS is super interesting, uh, but I just wrote my bachelor about that because I couldn't write it about Bitcoin, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, 
let, let me start start exploring Bitcoin now. Um, but I, I'm happy that I, that I write about that. Uh, it, it has a lot to do with like the sanctions and, and things like that. Yeah. So it's super interesting. Yeah, BRICS definitely is, is really interesting. And especially, uh, I feel like we're seeing slowly, slowly the whole fiat world collapsing in front of our eyes. Like when we look at uh, what BRICS and outside of the US dollar nations try to do is get away from the uh, US dollar dominance. They are trying to not be dependent on the US dollars because they can just print them out of thin air and they are exporting inflation to other countries. How many countries are like 66 countries or something like that that are using the US dollars and are not in the United States of America, uh, which yeah. is fascinating. That's a great business model for the US. They're just like printing, investing the printed money in their own co country and exporting the inflation to all the other countries. Um, that's, that's something uh, truly amazing to have. But this slowly, slowly begins to crumble down. Um, do you see uh, that... Bitcoin uh, will have long-term role in, in, in just destroying it or will they be destroyed on their own? I feel like sometimes uh, I play with that thing. They, they might try to have gold standard again. Do, do you see, like, how do you see fiat, like, playing out in, like, the next five, ten years when you see uh, the BRICS uh, uh, things, when, this, when you see maybe they try gold again? Because they're like, oh, we have to have some commodity, or will they try to inflate till till the end, and then it makes a big crash, and then we kind of try to build it up on on Bitcoin. Is is do you have any thoughts on on how the fiat uh, world uh, will go on for the next long term time? Um, like yeah, I, I would say that not not the gold standard again. Uh, probably then like they will see like my hope is that they they start to see like the true value of bitcoin and then maybe we start using bitcoin as a reserve uh, currency but like i think like uh, i don't know if you know this quote by elon musk he says that some people don't like sh change but you need to embrace change if the alternative is a, a disaster and like for the fiat part uh, like a future with Bitcoin will happen, whether we like it or not. And I'm quite scared, like how far do we need to go before it happens? Like either we, we actually need to see some better corporate cooperation with the state. Um, like, for example, what Jean, Jan Free is doing right now, uh, or it will look ugly, like people will lose all of their money due to like inflation and, and they will start looking for solution. And I also feel like that might be the reason that Bitcoin works so well in, in in developing countries because they are actually searching for something else, while other countries are not. So like, like the the world will be a better place with Bitcoin. But I am scared. Like, how far do like, for example, Sweden? How far do we need to go before we understand that okay, we need to change our fiat system because this ain't working. So. But, but it's a super good question. Yeah, and especially like how the interesting question is also how far are they willing to go to keep that fiat system running? Like, yeah, uh, how 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 far down the the monitoring uh, monitoring lane, the surveillance lane, will they go to try to keep that system in in place? I mean, CBDCs are the, the next thing, I guess. Sweden is on the role of CBDC, like they are even like now having a little bit more and more CDBCs when there is no cash and it's everything digital. They have a, a way better system of uh, rolling out a CBDC. Do you, do you feel like Sweden and the Euro and uh, the ECP will have like a CBDC in, in no time or how do, are you afraid of CBDCs? Of one? Uh, CBDCs. Uh, no, I, I don't know. Like honestly, with the euro and everything, we have our our own uh, our own currency in 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 Sweden. We have SIEC, uh and like the inflation rate there is it's not good uh, at all. It it has been really bad for the last time, and I think that we're like considering uh, moving to the to the euro again. Um, 
But I don't know. I haven't thought that much about that, honestly. Oh, no. So it, it's, it's, it's fascinating to, to, to see the, the CBDCs playing out. And when I talk with Bitcoiners from Africa, they're like not yeah. concerned at all. When I talk with Bitcoiners from EU countries, they're really concerned about uh, CBDCs. It's uh, definitely worth uh, looking into uh, into that. Um, what I'm wonder, wondering, besides like Bitcoin and all the th things that we already touched in the in the in the podcast, is there anything that you are really passionate about that we did not cover uh, till now? Uh, yeah, like it started pretty recently, uh, honestly. But I think that like after Madeira, I, I I started to think a lot about like how we talk about Bitcoin and. Like we, the most of us, we talk about Bitcoin as an investment, the best investment. Like indeed, I do agree. And we talk about Bitcoin as a store of value. But I feel like we often, like we skip the most important part, like a store of value. Okay. But what is value? Like I feel like we, we miss that um, a lot of times. And like, let me put, put it like this. Um, so imagine a world where all the people suddenly disappears and they've been replaced by, by new, new individuals who lack previous knowledge. So like these individuals that just come into the world, they would lack basic communication skills and, and knowledge about the world. So here value is compared to basic survival instincts. And like I find, for example, the, the ancient Egypt very interesting because the pharaohs, they saw this. They really saw this and like the forest was the, the ultimate defender uh, of the knowledge for the good of the society. So the society, he val they valued the, the pharaohs better than, than he valued himself, even though like he did like rituals and, 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 and things that were so extremes. But in those times, people lived in direct contact with, with value. I, I'm going to give an example. Like, so the, the pharaohs... It, so think about this, like the knowledge was so important that he, he realized that, okay, my people were so hungry and we have like, I found eight berries, but which can we eat? I need eight people to sacrifice their lives for this knowledge. And, and people did that because they thought that, okay, I'm sacrificing my life now. I might die because I might get poisoned, but the knowledge is more important than my life because I'm doing this for the people. So in this aspect, the, the value is instead directly linked to knowledge. Uh, and people like, we perceive value differently. Another example is like, let's see a, a young girl uh, in, in, my, in, in my age maybe, and she works daily in a mine, risking her life for survival every day. So for her, value means something, some, something different. I, and th th than it does for me. Like, I, I would never risk my life just to survive the day. So here, value is directly linked to survival. And the same could be applied, like, for example, to, let's say you have a daughter and she's been kidnapped. And, and like, if the kidnappers say that, okay, you need to pay us one million to get her back, would you do that? Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I think that you would never try to reduce that price. You would be like, uh, is it okay if I pay half the price? You wouldn't do that because in this aspect, value has nothing to do with money. Like it will, it will feel so wrong for you if you would be like, mm, can, can I like put down the price a bit? Because life cannot be valued in money. And I, I feel like after the, the era of, of the Pharaohs, the third party has always been like involved between humans, like humanity and, and, and value. And this is like, for example, banks and like value has after that, like been directly linked to economy and, and money. And yeah, of course, money fundamentally, it serves as, as a way to transfer value. We say that it's a, a medium of exchange, but, but like, I think that we should start looking more at value. And like, where do, where do Bitcoin fit into this? Well, when we talk about Bitcoin, we talk about Bitcoins directly linked to money and like that it's the safest value investment, but nobody talks about the real value. And, and like, 
value comes with honestly everything. Like, for example, why am I participating in this in this podcast? And why are you doing this? Why are you doing your podcast? Because we want to, like, I- I'm guessing now, but I'm guessing that you want to spread the word about Bitcoin. You want to, like, spread the knowledge. And there's, like, where the value lies in you. And that's the reason that I'm here. I, I also want to spread the knowledge. That's where the value lies in me. So... Yeah, yeah, I really think that we should like start looking at, at more at value. And like Bitcoin offers for, for the first time since the era of, of Ferris an opportunity to create like direct contact with value again. Like you can comp- con- contribute um, to society and to, the society can reward you without the needing to like a permission or like you don't have to be dependent or on, on like any third party or anything. But but also like the fact that that value and knowledge are universal. Everybody has access to to um, to value, and uh, we see that money is univer- is universal. But it's not. Everybody ha- does not have access to money, and value is universal. Everybody has access to to to, um, uh, to value, and Bitcoin is also universal. Everybody has access to Bitcoin. So I'm that, like right now I'm really trying to focus on like what are we missing? Like we need to start looking even more at value in in the Bitcoin sphere. I found that really interesting. It's an interesting example when uh, we also look at uh, adoption. Adoption rate is usually higher where countries need Bitcoin more because they value Bitcoin more because they need it more. And then we come back to this the, the subjective feeling of of, of value. Um, of, of 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 freedom also, like because they they need the freedom aspect more than we need in in uh, civil in developed countries more than developing countries. Uh, what is actually a uh, random question? But what is freedom for you? What what is the value of of freedom uh, for you personally? Wow, well, a lot of people will say that money is freedom. Some. No, I I wouldn't I would not agree with that. Uh, my parents they just got back. They went to Morocco and they met this girl. She was in my age, and my dad asked her, "What do you like to do in your spare time?" And and she said that I love my spare time. I love to go on the garden while I'm just reading a book. She was her she she was their guide on like a guided tour, and she said that I love to just go on on the garden reading a book because that's when I feel the most free I, I feel freedom and my dad was like wow he, she doesn't even know like what, what a vacation is she doesn't know that oh here we, we went from Sweden to Morocco uh, so I like money gives you so much more opportunities but money is not freedom like you choose freedom you choose like how you want to spend your time she's happy with her life because she I don't know I, I would say that she doesn't know any better Um she could probably do more, but like she's so happy in her situation, just that she can be in her garden reading her book. And like I'm really into to mindset. And my dad said that you would like connect so good with this person because you had you had the same mind. So freedom for me, it's honestly like get, getting everything out of life and like being happy with with what I'm doing, like. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do if I if what I'm earning, but it has everything to do with like how I'm spending my time. That's freedom for me. I'll say. I, I love it, and I also um, when I encounter younger people in my family, uh, when they're like questioning a little bit, oh, what they should do because at fourteen, fifteen, you kind of have to like decide what do you want to do in life, like this or that, uh, or like this question comes up, like. For every person, people can also question that uh, when they are 50 or 45 or like, like 35 or something like that. And what I always like to ask is like, what would you do if someone paid for everything? Like, what would you do every day when you don't have to pay for wood, when you don't have to pay for your living situation, when you don't have to pay for anything, everything is paid for, for yourself. Um, what would you do then with your time? And this is where freedom comes in. And the, the most amazing and beautiful definition of freedom is like, you have the choice what you do. Like uh, when you can choose um, 
to say to everything, to anyone and to uh, anything, yes and no. Like you can choose what you do. You yeah. like crazy example, but uh, if if I decide like, oh, I want to have a coffee in America in the next two hours, it's really hard for me to do because I have to fly <laughs> for a, a <laughs> long time. It takes a, it's a lot a lot of money to have such a spontaneous uh, flight and stuff like that. But if you have total freedom uh, uh, of of yourself and money and everything. Then you can actually decide. Oh yes, uh, let's let's fly to Miami. It's a six-hour flight, but let's have a coffee there. Uh, so um, th this is basically freedom. And of course, it's a lot connected to money because it, money is like the the base layer of everything. Every transaction has has money involved somehow, uh, even if it's not visible directly. Uh, but that that's that's really cool. Uh, a, a question because you mentioned mindset. That mindset is really important for you. Like, what's the What's the most important trait that you can have in a mindset that you're really passionate about? Is there anything that you're like, this you have to have in your character traits, in your mindset uh, that uh, that is important for yourself? Uh, wow, choose happiness. See, uh, see the see the the beautiful thing in in everything. Like, I, I can find myself in situations where I that are like really difficult and really hard, and somehow. I found the beauty in that. Like I can see that, for example, if you're at school and imagine that you're like buying a coffee and you're, you spill everything out, like on all, on all of you, you're like walking in the university with coffee all over you and you bought this coffee and it just been a, been a disaster. And instead of like walking there, being angry at yourself, I'm trying to like stop there and thinking that, wow, I'm in the university right now. I'm in Sweden. I get to wear clothes. I just bought a coffee that I spilled over me. I can buy a new coffee. Like, th th there we go with money again. <laughs> but, yeah, like, that mindset. Like, be thankful for every little thing. Like, you can buy a new coffee. It doesn't matter that much. And, yeah, and trust the universe. I trust the universe with everything. It's, it's uh, my, my mom always said, it's, I think it's a really common in Austria to say, I don't know if it's a worldwide thing, if, if some door closes, some some other door opens. Uh, like that's also like, she also believes a lot in, in the universe. I try to um, have the best in mind for myself. I mean, this is completely off of off Bitcoin now, that this, this talk, but um, I feel like there is some higher thing who rewards you if you are really putting the work in. Even if you're putting in a work in that's uh, kind of senseless, but you're trying the best and you're trying to figure out what's what sense is and stuff like that, uh, somebody will reward you. Otherwise, it's it's hard for me to believe that everything is kind of put in place. Like, I don't know. I had sometimes the feeling that, you know, the free, uh, the how is it called? The Truman Show, uh, where, where everything is like planned and and only one person is like free in there, but he's like uh, <laughs> uh, um, with all the actors. Sometimes it feels like that, uh, but it's 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 amazing to to have the freedom and to do what uh, you want to do, and you being able to choose freedom and being able to to do uh, everything. Yeah, really cool. I, I enjoyed it. For, for sure. Like just to fill that in, I got a question just uh, before jumping into this podcast. Um, my dad said, "Are you nervous?" And I said, "No." Because I trust universe. Like if if I like screw this up and hit, say something stupid, I trust universe that much that okay, then something better is coming for me. So, like I trust trust universe with everything. Yeah, uh, de definitely. It's 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 you you have to trust in the in the process of stuff. Uh, yeah. And uh, I I did not knew that I even have a, a a podcast like just in November last year, and now I have one, and I look. I think three days ago in in my analytics, and I got this crazy in uh, statistics. Uh, almost twenty thousand people watch me just on YouTube every week, which is like what? Wow. What? <laughs> and That's monthly, it's like, in, in monthly it's like hundred thousand people, and and I'm like, I just started this out because I wanted to connect with more uh, Bitcoiners, and all of a sudden people watch me, and people are, are willing to pay for sponsorships. People are willing. Uh, to, to pay me uh, channel memberships uh, for like monthly 
for things to get for free honestly also uh it's it's just amazing for me and i'm, I'm really thankful and I've, i feel like uh you have to really work hard then then you get rewarded somehow and you have you have a little chance to to alter things uh but uh some things just are, are, are meant for you uh, perfect yes you, you don't it's so good <laughs> I'm, i'm trying i'm trying thank you amy <laughs> We're coming closer to the end routine uh, and our end routine in the podcast is where our previous guest is asking a question for the, the next guest without knowing who the next guest is. And uh, the question is a really interesting one. What is your opening line for Bitcoin uh, with a pre-coiner? Like when you have like someone that does not get Bitcoin or does not understand Bitcoin or they are not in Bitcoin yet, uh, what is your like opening line? How do you... Uh, spark a conversation with them about Bitcoin. Okay, I would for sure say, uh, I, I would say, do you, do you understand our current monetary system? And they will say, yeah, I do. And then I would say, okay, tell me about it. And then I would just, oh no, you don't understand our current monetary system. And then I would say, okay, do you, do you trust our monetary system? And they will say, yes. And then I will say, okay, do you know that you don't even have to trust Bitcoin? You can verify Bitcoin. You don't even have to trust that Bitcoin works. You can see that it works. Same goes with, for example, your phone, your cell phone. Do you, like, do you use your phone? Yeah, yeah, everybody uses their phone today. Do you understand what's happened, like what's happening beyond that screen when you're using it? No, you don't, but it works, right? So you don't have to understand everything about Bitcoin. Like I would on, I think I would start there and then like start digging into to the problem with our current monetary system and just make them understand that you use our current monetary system without even understanding it. Try Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And when I uh, tell them, oh, but I, it's so complicated to understand Bitcoin and stuff like that, I'm like, First of all, not everybody has to understand Bitcoin because uh, you send WhatsApp messages every day and you understand when this second uh, tick is coming that the other one got it. Yeah. But can you actually explain what's happening there technically? I feel like maybe 1% of the population can because they learned it in, in IT in school or something like that. Or not, not even 1%, probably like 0.1% can actually explain Uh, what the TCP IP, uh, TCP IP protocol is and how this all works uh, in, in in shape. And I studied IT and I cannot fully explain it, honestly. It's, it's way complicated. <laughs> it's way more complicated than that. Um, and it's, it's, it's really important to, to make them question their belief. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can even choose to go with a, a really hard question in, in, the, in, the, in, in, this, in this conversation with like, do you think inflation is theft? <laughs> I, I, love, I love I love that one. <laughs> But like my friends would answer, "What is inflation?" Yeah, it's it's. Uh, what, what most people don't understand this. Uh, what what is inflation? What, 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 how do you define uh, inflation? Actually, um, I would say that every time, ugh, like how how if I'm if I'm we're about to uh, um, explain inflation to a dummy, I would say that. Um, Do you know that you have money in your bank account? Yeah, I do. Okay, do you know that our central bank, they print money every day. So the burger that you bought for five years ago, it cost 75 Swedish crowns. And now you pay 100 for that. Have you ever thought of that? Uh, and I would probably say that every time like the central bank prints money, the, the money that you stored in your bank account loses value. I would just try to keep it like as simple as possible. That's that's amazing and uh, very very true. And uh, I feel like we have to challenge the things because most people still believe that two percent inflation is good. We touched on it a little bit, uh, and uh, I, I I'm really outrageous sometimes when people are like, "Yeah, but we need inflation for the economy to grow. Why? Why do we need a central authority to steal our purchasing power to have some progress? I think we humans are better than that." Yeah, you can get the economy moving in other ways. Uh, definitely, you can just be productive for, for one. 
Uh, yeah. Perfect. And thank you, uh, Amy. Thank you, uh, PDC Chick, uh, for, for being on. Uh, and it was a pleasure having you. It was a pleasure talking with you. Um, for people that want to know more about you, for people that have questions uh, what, what, from what you're saying and want to get in touch with you, uh, where can people reach you in the best way? Uh, I would say right now on uh, either on Twitter or on my website. I'm really bad at, uh, at going through like uh, TikTok requests and things like that. But on Twitter, my handle is bt underline chick and my website is www.btcchick.com. Uh, perfect. And thank you for being on. Thank you so much for having me.